Amen. They say, I got to get myself together. But I got some place to go. Amen. I want to go to heaven. Amen. As long as we keep that as their focus and as our focus. Amen. That I want to go to heaven. Amen. Let's give our young people another big hand this morning. Amen. Amen. Wonderful job that they have already done on this morning. And we are glad to have them with us as always. Amen. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Psalm 133 tells us, Behold how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is good to be unified in the house of the Lord. Just one more time. Amen. Amen. Some of us know that God didn't have to do it. But I'm, <clears throat> I'm so glad that he did. So glad that he did as, as our worshipers enter and we prepare ourselves for our morning invocation. We want to thank the Lord for one more day. Amen. For one more day. I, I don't know if y'all realize, but God been good to you. God has been good to you, to all of us. Amen. Amen. As we fix our hearts and minds on Christ. Father, we thank you. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace and we thank you for your mercy. God, we, we've come here today not to put on a show we come here today not out of routine or tradition but God we come to worship you we come to give your name the glory the honor and the praise for you are so worthy of all our praise Father God we so many times we forget about you throughout the course of our days. But I'm so thankful that you never forget about us. Father, we, we pause in this moment because we want to be closer to you. We pause in this moment to acknowledge who you are in the world but also in our lives have your way in this place God touch every heart and touch every mind draw us and link us closer and stronger back to you and when it is all said and done God your name will get the praise you will get the glory so have your way in this place do what only you can do. In the matchless, wonderful name of Jesus the Christ, we do pray. And all of God's children said amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. We are, we are going to have our welcome coming from Master Isaiah Holmes. Isaiah Holmes. Amen. Welcome to Mount Zion. We're glad you're here. Amen. 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 We want to thank Brother Isaiah. And again, we want you to know we are glad that you're here. We are glad that you're here. Anytime our doors are open every Sunday, every Sunday, we want you to come and be a part of the worship experience. We start with Sunday school at nine and the worship experience at 10. We welcome all of our online viewers on Facebook and YouTube and we thank God for, for you being with us as well. And again, again um, join us throughout the week on Tuesdays, Tuesday nights at 6.30, at 6.30 for Bible study on Tuesdays and then Wednesdays at six o'clock 
for our prayer ministry leading us through a time of prayer on our prayer call on, um, on Wednesday evenings. Amen. So join us throughout the week, throughout the week. Just a couple announcements, really not a whole lot I'm going to go through today. Um, again, we want to say um, if there's anybody celebrating a birthday, a birthday in the month of March, please get those into us. We will acknowledge all of those on next Sunday, on next Sunday. So all March birthdays, please get those into us so that you all can be acknowledged as well. And then again, um, we want to ask for your continued cooperation um, in regards to our parking challenges, amen. So please help us in, in, in our parking challenges. Make sure you park in the lines in the parking lot outside. Please make sure you park in the lines. And, um, and even if you have to park across the street, um, we have a cones and things set up. Let's just you know try to have some order. We're trying to keep as many cars as possible off the sides of the road, off the side. We're trying as our best to keep as many off the sides of the road. We don't want anybody's car to get hit or anything like that that's parking on the side of the road. Um, we, we have a plan in place. We're, we're just getting more information to try to address what we need to do in that regard. So just continue to cooperate with us, please. Continue to do that. And then as always, we, we thank you for your cooperation with our ushers. Amen. And, and, and following the, the guidance and the direction of the ushers when you come into the house of the Lord. Amen. I know, I know you got a favorite seat and there's one way to guarantee to get your favorite seat. Be here by 845 and you can get your favorite seat. Amen. Amen. But just continue to please work with our ushers as they welcome you into the house and try to get you seated um, as, as best as possible. Amen? Amen. Amen. We, because we, we're always glad to have you all here with us. Um, also, again, um, our food share ministry, again, we say thank you to all of you that continue to support and, and contribute to our food share ministry where we provide boxes of fresh fruit and vegetables to all of our um, elderly seniors that have been identified inside and outside the church, as well as our single parents and others throughout the community. And, and, and the word gets out. The word gets out. Um, we, I, I just listened to the voicemails this morning, and some people were calling in and re asking about how that they can be a part of our food share program. So, again, we thank, we thank God for what he is allowing us to do through your sacrifice of giving. Amen. Amen. So we thank God for that. We thank God for that. Um, before I go any further with any other announcements, I'm on pause. I, I know we have um, Sunday school acknowledgments as well as our youth acknowledgments today. Amen. So I'm, I'm going to ask the Sunday school to come first. Sunday school, you all come first, and then the youth acknowledgments will come after Sunday school. Okay, our first acknowledgement is for young Master Coleman. Come down. <laughs> Coleman is special to us all, but he's special to me. He makes me remember <laughs> when my sons were little, and I don't know if it's just boys or if being an only female child, let's just say I was in for a lot of rude awakenings. Coleman has an unbridled spirit where he marches to the beat of his own drum. Yes. Yes. And nobody hears the music but him. Yes. I just pray that he holds on to that through yes. adulthood because it will be an asset. Coleman's teacher, which is Miss Wendy and Miss Tequila, Coleman's growth in Sunday school gets us excited because he, he eagerly is listening and will share when you least expect it. One day the others couldn't remember the answer, but Coleman did and provided it. Just to see how God is using Coleman gets us excited 
on what is about to come. Thank you, Coleman, for being that beacon of light for us. Great job. Stephanie Price. <laughs> Ms. Teresa submitted this. I would like to recognize Stephanie Price for our class this month. Stephanie is one of our students who is an extrovert, very talkative, very sociable, active, and warm but all for the hunger of the word of God. She keeps me on my toes and passed on his toes when he enters the room for the understanding of the word of God. And she's that same person every Sunday. And she has perfect attendance. And she's on time every Sunday. And her answer is always, yes, ma'am, I'll do it. So it is with great honor that I recognize Stephanie Price. Thank you. Stephanie is in our um, elementary, upper elementary, two to five grade rods. The, la um, the high schooler is Tamaria Wadsworth. Is she here? Oh. Tamari is another special student. She is a reminder that Sunday school is not just about the word of God. It's being able to apply it and also being willing to recognize your strength and your weaknesses and not being ashamed to work on it. I remember when she first started coming, there were some trials, but she did it with a generous and gracious heart. She learned everything we tried to teach her, even when I was up in there tutoring her in Sunday school. <laughs> Tamaria Wadsworth, Tamaria brings an element of wit and real life questions to the class. We have seen her go from not saying anything to being the first to answer a biblical question. Sharing her prayer requests and sharing how God answered her prayers. <clears throat> Most recently, Tamaria shared the struggle she was having with understanding her biology teacher. The language barrier was causing an issue. Tamaria asked for prayer during class, and her mom requested prayer as well. Look at God. <laughs> After her exams, Tamaria scored high enough to remain on the honor roll. Tamaria plays basketball for Newberry High School and takes her game seriously. She brings that same tenacity to our class, and we enjoy seeing her grow into a young adult, mentally, emotionally, and most of all, spiritually. We take joy and recognize Tamaria Wadsworth. We love you, Tamaria, and keep God first. In Jesus' name, your teachers. <clears throat> Excuse me. Brother Carenzo Bates and Sister Willie Hughes. is an adult. Amen. Amen. This is the, f I don't know if I even ever told you y'all could submit something, but anyway. <laughs> you can. You know, I just took it for granted. So when the person, I'm like, yeah, sure. But I just took for granted that the extension was there. And I'd like to ask Miss Nikki DeShields to come forward, please. Amen. Nikki is not only a student, but she's one of our teachers for the adult class. Come on over here, Nikki. <laughs> over here. I can see. Oh, I keep doing that wrong. This is Nikki Brooks, not Nikki DeShield. You know, transitions, transitions. She's evolved. <laughs> This was submitted by Sister Sherry. I can see and feel the growth. She has really allowed the spirit to use her and lead her. Her teaching has been elevated. She's on another level of anointing. 
I pray she continues to embrace the call on her life, letting nothing separate her from the things that God is going to use her for. Stay encouraged through all things. And she's also one of those persons when asked to teach, she did not hesitate. She looked at me funny, but she did it anyway. And she does a great, wonderful job. <laughs> and as always, while she's taking the picture, we are uh, preparing for VBS, which is going to be July 15th through 19th. We are looking for volunteers uh, and teachers, so, uh, assistant teachers, as well as we're going to have Friday is going to be our day of fun and games. So if anyone would like to donate any prizes, any tokens, any gifts, or whatever you want, if you have something. If you like me, you shop and you buy things you don't need. So you always have something extra. If you want to donate those items to be used as gifts, feel free to do so. And we'll probably put a box out soon. Thank you. Good morning, Mount Zion. Good morning. Of course, this is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. We're so glad that we were able to acknowledge our Sunday school, our youth. It is it's such a blessing. So I have a couple acknowledgments for this month. I want to thank uh, Grandpa Curtis Shell for sending me this. Uh, grandparents always play a role. I know my kids love their grandparents. And when I came up short, grandparents always had. So Mr. Curtis Shell sent me that Zachorian Ellis. Is Zachorian here? Stand up. There you go, darling. Zachorian Ellis is a sixth grader. He is an AB honor roll student at Sanders Middle School in Lawrence, South Carolina. His grades this past um, term, advanced math, I don't know what that means. I'm working on the math we're doing now, but advanced, he got an 80. Social studies, a 97. In art, a 100. Oh, he's an artist. Okay, science are 89, language arts are 85, and strings, 98. To God be the glory. Continue to do great things, according. Not only do we acknowledge just our youth, but we try to acknowledge, like we said, even our adults here. So uh, Reverend Shepherd did announce this, but since it is Accolade Sunday, I want to make sure that we know that our own sister, Tequila Bates, has been nominated for second vice president of the Gassimity YWA Association. Ms. Constance Mayers is so proud of that. And I just want to let y'all know that Tequila's doing wonderful things, and she's keeping us on our toes with the YWA, so to God be the glory for her. This weekend, she is doing the dance and baseball basketball with the Bates, so pray much for them. <clears throat> Mr. Jimmy Madison, our very own deacon here, holds the door down for us no matter what. I don't know if y'all get a smile every Sunday, but I do. He makes me want to come into the church. So on March the 1st, um, Isaiah Holmes, who did our welcome, invited Mr. Jimmy to come to his elementary school. And Mr. Jimmy did to Carve Alliance Elementary School, where he read to a kindergarten class. So you know that's five-year-olds, y'all, you know, with different personalities. He said that the most difficult thing wasn't reading, but was getting up off that floor after he did read to the children. <laughs> so we want to thank Mr. Madison for spreading that love, doing that ministry, and he challenges all the men to be able to go with him next year. There's different elementary schools, and I'm quite sure even in Isaiah's district or our district, you guys can do that. So to God be the glory for you, Mr. Jimmy. Now, along with Mr. Jimmy and the certain youth that we've already had, we now have Miss Armani. Miss Armani, she always said, good morning, Miss Lavanya. I can't help but to smile. Isn't that great? She is a a B, she's on the AB on road for the third quarter. She recently did map testing, and her reading goal was 212. She made 209. We're just three points away. It's all right. And her math goal was 220, and she made a 217. I think they might have miscalculated. Three points both. Okay. So we're going to get there, Amani, no problem. She made improvement for fall scores for now. So we are so proud of you. Keep doing great things, Armani. 
Miss Logan Gallman. Miss Logan Gallman is a fourth grader at Little Mountain Elementary School. Logan continues to work hard in the classroom and is trying her best to meet her goals. Logan recently joined the running club and is working hard on her upcoming 5K. Hey. Amen. To God be the glory. You're going to do some things a lot of us adults had not done in this field. Miss Leah Gallman. Miss Leah Gallman is a fourth grader at Little Mountain Elementary School, and Leah received a B honor roll for this nine weeks. Leah and her archery team, y'all remember what archery is, right? Archery team has qualified and will compete at the state competition this Tuesday at the South Carolina State Fairgrounds. Congratulations. Good job. See, our kids are not only doing what is expected of them, but things that we don't know about, and they're excelling at it. To God be the glory. Miss Tamaria Wasworth. Tamaria is just one of my favorite people. We can uh, relate to each other without even saying anything. So Tamaria Wasworth is a sophomore at Newberry High School. For the third nine weeks, she's on the AB Honor Roll. At the end of last year, she was in the top 50 of 222 students for her class. <clears throat> and that was for a junior year. She, let me see, and I just did my class for my junior year. She just did her classes for a junior year, and she is now 35 yes. out of 222 yes. students. Yes. To God be the glory. She is currently doing track and placed first in the 100 meter hurdles and has placed first in the four by 100 meter with three other teammates this past Tuesday. She's fast, she's smart, she's articulate. To God be the glory for your gifts tomorrow. <laughs> Master Coleman. He gets to stand up. Come on over here so they can see. I know, you stand right here. Don't, don't go too far. <laughs> Coleman had a great third nine weeks at Reuben Elementary School. Coleman is doing very well in all of his classes, and he is now getting ready for his third season in T-ball and is continuing to enjoy karate. His instructor, Sensi, said, we are so glad to have Coleman in karate. He's doing very well and answers all the questions. Mom is proud of you, Coleman. Keep up the good work. Yeah. Amen. Now, I will say my cousin Stephanie just asked me, did you get my youth accolades? Yeah, I got your accolades, but they never come over to where everybody else has come. I don't know what's going on. So first, we're going to talk about Miss Stephanie Prime. During the third nine weeks, Stephanie is still on track for all A's. She met and has exceeded all of her math and ELA goals for the recent math testing and was super excited. Stephanie herself took a break from sports for a season. Now listen, I want y'all to listen to this. Stephanie herself took a break from sports for a season, but instead used this time to help a younger neighbor's daughter with her volleyball drills after school. Not before school, not during school, after school, a decision she made herself. On March the 21st, Stephanie received a call from her principal about being honored for Richland, Lexington 5, and the Greater Irmo Chamber Commons. The district chose one student and one teacher, and she was nominated by her teacher for her great personal achievements in and outside of school. Stephanie will be receiving this award, award on April the 10th. To God be the glory for the wonderful things that you continue to do here. All right, Miss Caitlin Curry. Hi, Caitlin. <laughs> Caitlin is a third grader at Hammond School. She earned all A's and has met or exceeded all expectations again for the third nine weeks. She continues to be active with Girl Scouts, tennis lessons, tap and hip hop dance classes, and recently started playing softball. She has been able to get on base for the last two games, including hitting an RBI and scoring a run. She is continuing to improve with each game. Continue to do great things, Caitlin. 
You know, God is so awesome and so good to us, y'all. Every Sunday when Reverend Shepherd stands up here, he talks about things that his pastor friends have issues and problems with, from the youth all the way up to the adults. And we are so blessed here at Mount Zion that if we do have those issues, we pray. We try to internalize and get them right. And we are so grateful to God, to our leadership, and to all of these youth who think it's not robbery to do the things that God has blessed them yeah. to do. Thank you all so much. Amen. Amen. God bless you to all of our young people and the great things that you all are doing. And parents and grandparents, I encourage you. Um, this, this is the time for them. On the fourth Sunday, we make this time specifically for them to acknowledge them. So make sure you get, get the information turned in for the children so that their names can be called and their recognitions and acknowledgments can be given before everybody. Amen. Before everybody. Because there's some of those things we definitely need to know about. Um, we, we got a challenge from, from Dick and Jimmy to all of us men. Um, the schools are always looking for volunteers. They're always looking for volunteers. So there are things that we can do at, at different schools around the area. Um, Stephanie, y'all make sure y'all let me know when that program is. Amen. We just, we just want to continue to support our young people. Amen. And support our young people in any way that we can. So God bless. Let's give them all another big hand. Amen. Amen. They are doing some great things, some great things. Amen. And so we thank God for them. And everything that they do is, is, not, uh, is not always called out, but I hope that at home we're, we're, we're not just fussing. Amen. Amen. But we're, 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 we're lifting them up for the things that for that, that doing as well. I don't know what's going on with my mic, but we gotta, we gotta take care of that, amen. Um, let's see, what else I got real fast. Again, as always, we want to, again, just thank you for inviting people to church. Amen. Inviting people to church. We had the March workshops last week for the Gethsemane Association down at Trinity Baptist Church. And I will tell you all, Mount Zion, um, um, people are talking. Amen. People are talking and they are very, very encouraged and impressed by what we are doing here at Mount Zion and what they're hearing about Mount Zion. And that's all to God's glory. That's all to God's glory for what he is doing in this place. So we thank you for those that were able to attend. If you missed it, you missed it. Amen. I mean, the, 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 classes, the classes were wonderful. The messages were wonderful on last week. Um, and so, so we, we, we hope that, um, that some of you were able to participate. But um, again, we thank you all for your support in representing Mount Zion during the Gethsemane's March workshops last week. Um, and then last thing, real quickly, from, this is from our, um, our, our pastoral anniversary um, committee. Um, again, tickets are now available. Um, to all of those, all the committee members, they will have tickets, and then also to all of um, to all of uh, our volunteers that have agreed to work with us in, in selling tickets. Please meet us um, after service. We're going to meet in the conference room so that you can get your physical tickets and things of nature, so that you can do those things. But also, tickets are available on Givelify. You can pay for your ticket on Givelify. Now, there was a question or concern or whatever you want, challenge or proposal or whatever about our seating arrangements at the banquet. Um, one thing I will just tell you, the earlier you get your ticket, yeah, do I need to finish that sentence? Yeah, yeah, the, the earlier you get your ticket, you know, more than likely the better seat you will have, amen? Amen. But once the tickets are gone, they are gone. We got limited space, limited number of tickets. So once they're gone, they're gone. But um, um, all of our um, committee members that are here, all of the, the anniversary committee members that are here, will y'all please stand? Uh, Brother Tally Wadsworth, Sister Helen Shumpert, Sister Sandra Goodwin, Sister Ellen Bowers, uh, Sister Joanne is helping us with tickets. Um, who else is on the committee? Um, Sister Jennifer, you already standing. I see you. Know, amen. Amen. So if you got any questions about anything, please see them. Please see them in that regard. Amen. Amen. So, we're, but, but all of you all, let us meet 
and those that I reached out to this past week um, that, that have agreed to assist us will meet real quick. We won't be here real long. Just need to give you information um, at the end of service today. Amen. Amen. All right. Now, I think we have Miss Leah Goldman is going to get ready to come to um, offer our offertory prayer. This is an opportunity where, again, we can give back unto the Lord of what it is that he has blessed us with. Amen. Anybody been blessed? Amen. 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 We're going to ask you all to stand as Miss Leah leads us with our offertory prayer. who can give and can't give um let the lord lord let the people give from their hearts in jesus name we pray amen 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 god bless you god bless you god bless you and then as just before the choir gets ready to come back we're going to ask miss caitlin curry to come and give us our scripture then following the scripture the choir will come back and bless us with a song and then we shall hear from the word of god Those that can stand, if you will, stand with us as she reads our scripture. Good morning. Good morning. I'll be reading John 3.16. Right. Yeah. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Amen. I need just a little more Jesus. God bless y'all. God bless y'all. God bless you. Amen. Amen. That, that, that's the way to get the preacher ready. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Come on, give them another hand. They deserve another hand. Amen. Have mercy. Have mercy. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, God, for all that we've seen and all that we've heard. God, you are allowing your spirit to reign free in this place. God, even in this preaching moment, cover these children, God. The enemy that tries to come up against them. Block them, God. For God, you said in your word, no weapon that is formed against thee shall be able to prosper. And every tongue that come up against you shall condemn. God, we thank you. Have your way now, Lord. Allow the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart to be acceptable in thy sight. For God, you are my strength and my redeemer in the blessed name of jesus the christ i do pray we say amen amen first timothy first timothy chapter three first timothy chapter number three chapter number three you you didn't do it one time i'm gonna let you sit this time because we is is real real direct first timothy chapter three Verses, starting at verse 14. These things write I unto thee, hoping to come unto thee shortly. But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Amen. Amen. That's 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. And I want to use for our subject this morning, appropriate church behavior. Appropriate church behavior. You can, you can, you can, you can give yourself a subtopic, how to act in church. How to act in church. How, how to conduct yourself how to behave in church in amsterdam the netherlands some 400 years a baptist tradition was celebrated with liturgical dances and celebrations and they began to name the names of baptists who have meant much to our heritage across the years and reverend bynum they they, they named those names but I ain't recognize none of them. As a denomination, Baptists have been about 400 years as a denominational sect, and they mention names of many of Baptists around the world who have meant much to our history and our heritage, but I didn't see any other names that I recognize. Names like my former assistant pastor at James Hopewell when I was growing up, Reverend Robert Choice, that, that when, when our pastor, Pastor Robinson, would get in the middle of his sermon, Reverend Choice would get up and run from the front of the church to the back of the church and then back to the front and take his seat again. I didn't hear his name called. Uh, I, I didn't see the names of those old songsters in the church like my Aunt Gertrude Nance, who, who, whose name wouldn't call, but she would sing that song, you may be high and you may be low. You may be rich and you may be poor, but when the Lord gets ready, you got to move. Pa Patrick, I didn't hear her name. You know, I, I, I didn't see the name of Deacon David Cook there when prayer service was going on and he would get down on his knees and he would say, Lord, here we are. 
once more and again. Knee bent and body bowed to the Lord's dust. With our heads buried in our locks of our shoulders, our hearts lifted to the throne of mercy. He said, I want to thank you that when we laid down last night, our bed was not our cooling board and our sheets were not our winding chains. We want to thank you for a reasonable portion of health and strength. Digging by them, I didn't see or hear those names. I didn't hear names like Sister Princetta Harris, who would ask me after church every Sunday, are you getting some rest and drinking your water? I, I, I didn't hear a name like Sister Pearl Hall, who every other week would bring me a bag of ginger mints. I, I didn't hear names like, like Sister Pearl Davis and Sister Thelma Thompson, who anytime they got close enough to me, they would grab me and hug me around the neck and give me a kiss on the cheek. Didn't hear names like Sister Justine Tove, who would sit right there in the aisle, and although she may have looked like she was asleep, heard everything I said. I, I, I didn't hear them names. So, so I wanted to call the names of those persons today to remind those of us who were raised in the church that we ought not forsake the old landmark and forget where we came from because church has taken a funny shift and a strange turn. The church used to be a hospital for crippled souls, but it's now becoming a museum for frozen saints. It used to be a clinic for wounded spirits, but we're turning it into a theater of performing arts. Because a whole lot of stuff that passes for church is just smoking mirrors, sounding brass, tinkling cymbals. And church don't sound like church used to sound. I, I need somebody that was raised in the church like I was raised who, who can remember when you were chewing gum and, and the usher would come and take her program and tap you on the shoulder and tell them, put, put, put that right here. Come on, talk back to me if you can. Y'all remember when somebody would fall out and, and they would get smelling salts to wake them back up and they would wake up and start back shouting again. Because they knew that God had to bring them out. They, they knew that God had to carry them through because they were nobodies everywhere else. But on Sunday morning, a strange dignity caught them. And they had a sense of grandeur that overwhelmed them. They, because they were called out of their names all week long. But Sunday morning, they were brother so-and-so and, -so and sister so-and-so. They were deacon and chairman and Sunday school superintendent. They, they loved the Lord because he heard their cry. Pitied every groan that long as I live, while trouble rise, I'll hasten to his throne. Something is happening in the church. And I don't know if we have Americanized the gospel or spiritualized the American dream. Wow. Haven't figured that quite out yet. Have, have, have we Americanized or Europeanized the gospel? Yeah. Or have we spiritualized the American dream? Uh -huh. To the degree that the church no longer sounds like the church used to sound. Uh -huh. Our music is just R&B with Jesus sprinkled in every now and then. Y'all getting quiet on me. Starting to sound like that junk I heard on the radio where this rapper had the song, Glenn, he said, I ain't worried about nothing. 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 I just wanted to stop the song and ask him, what is this you ain't worried about? But you see, in many of our churches, the music got that same hip-hop beat with Jesus just thrown in every now and then. That's the reason why we got to sing the song 30 minutes, because there ain't no theology in it. Don't, don't, don't get quiet on me now. What's wrong with what a fellowship? What a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting longs. What's wrong with blessed assurance? Jesus is mine. 
See, young folk, they call that old school, but that ain't old school. That, that's the music that brought us to where we are right now. And there's a sound that all the, we all, the church ought to still have because God has been good to us. We are where we are and we have what we have because it was nobody but the Lord. Uh, give me a little help here on the monitor, Elijah. But Paul, after giving the qualifications of the bishop and the deacon in his letter, uh, First and Second Timothy, Titus, Philemon, they belong to this Pauline body of doctrine known as the Pauline pastoral letters. And he's writing to them as a father in the ministry, as the pastor, as the overseer to give them instructions of how they ought to act in church. You see, Gnostic Judaizers have gotten into the fellowship and dilute and weaken what Paul has established. And young Timothy is the pastor of the church at Ephesus. And Paul writes to him to give him some instructions of how we ought to act, how we ought to conduct ourselves, how we ought to behave in the house of God. Is right there in verse number 14. These things write I unto thee, hoping that I will come unto thee shortly. But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou ought to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of truth. We ought to act with reverence for God. I, I didn't really come to shout you this morning. I come to help somebody reverence for God there ought to be a holy awe when we come in the Lord's house ladies and gentlemen God is not the man upstairs I wouldn't sleep good at night if there was a man upstairs God is not some supreme being or higher power but God, in the word of the Latin language, is mysterium tremendum. He's the awful mystery. He's the dread sovereign of the universe. He's the event in eternity that made its advent in the context of time. He's divinity with dust painted on him. He's the awesome other. He's God, very God. He's the ground of being. He's the source and the center. He's the subject and the verb of the Christian religion. He's the center and the circumference. He's the first and the last. He's the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. And we ought to have reverence so much for God that when we come into his house, we don't play church. Again, those of you who are like myself that were raised in church as kids, we would go to church and then we would come back home and we would get out in the yard or we would get in the back room and we would start mimicking what we saw in church. One of us would be the preacher, one would be the deacon and the choir and the usher and, and, and we were playing church. We, we were acting like what we saw. We were mimicking and mocking what we were around because we had no reverence for God. We had no experience because we hadn't been through anything. We were just mocking what we saw other people do. But Mount Zion, I've been walking with the Lord for a little while now. And I've been through enough in my life already. Some you know about and some you don't. That God has brought me through. So I don't have to play church anymore. I don't have to shout like I used to see them shout. I don't have to act like I used to see them act in church. I got my own story. I got my own testimony. I got my own witness of what God has done in my life. And I respect and I reverence God so much. That every time I hear his name, it humbles me. Reverence. Respect. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That's, that's what the Bible says. Am I right, Reverend Bynum? 
that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Reverence for God helps you to differentiate between the sacred and the profane. Between the holy and the common, reverence for God, fear of the Lord. Isaiah said, it was in the year that King Uzziah died that I saw also the Lord high and lifted up and his train filled the temple. Seraphim with six wings, two they covered their face, two they covered their feet, and with two they did fly. He said, smoke filled the house. Because his presence was in the house. And Isaiah said, I saw the doorposts were moved at his presence. Y'all don't miss this. Inanimate objects shouted in the presence of the living God. Now, if a piece of wood can shout, and have reverence for God. Who woke you up this morning? Who put food on your table? Who helped you raise your children by yourself? Who opened doors that were closed in your face? You ought to have reverence for God. There was a, there was, there was a time, brothers and sisters, there was a time of yesteryear, and I... I'm not trying to go back to the good old days when gas was just 99 cents a gallon. I ain't talking about that, but I'm talking about when they used to read the scripture and they start shouting. And a lot of the old preachers, they didn't, they didn't go to seminary. They, they didn't know anything about Bruner and Von Hoffer and Brueggemann and Barr. They knew nothing about systematic theology and dogmatic rhetoric. They couldn't explain exegeting or eisegeting the text. They just started preaching when they stood up. And they quit when they sat down. Ah, but before my feet could touch the floor, I would hear them say, he died. Didn't he die? And they wouldn't stop until they would say, but bright early that Sunday morning, he rose from the dead. I, I'm going to say that the next week. I'm going to say that. I'm going to say that. Say that, that. That used to get people excited. That used to make people shout. That used to make people praise the Lord. But we gotten so sophisticated now. We so uptight now. We so uppity now. That we come to church, the black church especially. And, 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 and we don't like to carry on like that anymore. The preacher make too much noise. It, it, it don't take all of that. that, that that's too ignorant and, and old fashioned and old timey. But when you get in trouble, you better know how to leave them churches in, down in Columbia and come on back up here with us who really know how to get in contact with the Lord. Because we understand where our help comes from, that all of our help comes from the Lord. So reverence for God. And then we ought to have respect. Secondly, we ought to have respect for God's people. Lord, have mercy. Turn me up. Turn me up. I, I need to make sure they hear this. Reverence for God. That's how you ought to act in church. And a respect for God's people. And I don't know why, Deacon Jimmy, why, why I'm having such a problem, such a difficult time teaching the members of our church just to be loving and respectful to one another. You know, because some folk in church won't even let you sit down. They'll put a Bible in the seat. They'll put their coat and jacket and pocketbook in the seat. And won't even let you sit down. Got to almost have security to come make them slide over. 
See, y'all didn't know I see all of that stuff. I, I stand right there and I watch everything. I sit right there and I see everything. Won't let the folk of God sit down. But then every two to four years, you get some politician that want to come in here and lie to us. And we'll escort them right down front. And the man or woman that needs to hear about Jesus who, 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 who been smoking weed and got tattoos everywhere and pants hanging down and we make them sit at the back. As if they are not as important as the folk that lied to us. Um, but I come to tell you that Jesus came for the crackhead. <laughs> He died for the homosexual. He died for the girl with tattoos on her neck. He died for the boy that's still smoking weed. And you ought not be so sanctimonious looking down your nose at them. Just because you put your weed down last week. You watched that club stamp off the back of your hand early this morning. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And if it were not for God's mercy, we'd all be in hell right now. Uh, I need to get over to us that when you come to this church, you are not in control. This is the Lord's house. And when people have been beaten and crushed and knocked around all week long, you don't know who you sitting next to today. You, you don't know how much hell they went through in their family just to get to church this morning. I wish I had a witness in here. You don't know much how, how, how much they had to go through on their job just to make it through the week. And you got the nerve to sit up in here and look at them like they smell or like they're not as good as you. Who do you think you are? You ain't nobody. If the Lord pulled the cover off of you today, you would be in the crack house with them tomorrow. Just like that person you criticizing. But grace Mercy, forgiveness. Lord, have mercy. He looked beyond my faults. So we got to learn how to be kind to one another. You, you're not at Williams Bryce Stadium. You, 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 you're not at the Colonial Life Arena. You're at the house of God. Whenever the Lord sees fit for us to build a new church, speak those things. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell the architect, I don't want you to design it like a stadium. Because a stadium is designed for fans. And many of our churches look like stadiums. And it's apropos, Reverend Bynum, because many of our churches are full of fans. People who admire Jesus, but they're not true disciples. Y'all getting quiet on me now. If you will be my disciple, you've got to deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow, follow me. It does not matter who comes in this church to join. The Bible says, not whosoever feels... But whosoever will, let them come and join and drink from the fountain of life freely. And Mount Zion, can I tell you something? Most people would join our churches if the church would get out of the way. See, see how quiet some of y'all getting? You paid for that seat. You, you're a tither. You teach the Sunday school class. You've been here 25 years. But you need to understand there is no seniority. There's no clique. There's no class in the house of God. There's no social strata. There's no economic background that gives you an upper hand over anybody. All of us coming here on the same level, lost and on our way to hell. 
And once you meet Jesus Christ and get saved, you ain't nothing but a sinner saved by grace. Y'all gonna help me preach this, won't you? We're just nobodies trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. And, and I know he can save anybody because he saved me. And he saved you. So you don't have the right to look down your nose at anybody. You ain't got the right to think bad about anybody else. When you, that, that just because it looks like they doing a little worse than you are, you, you just like them need to be in the house. And we shouldn't be looking down at them because they were created in his image and in his likeness. This is how you ought to behave yourself in church, in the house of God, which is the pillar and the ground of truth. That needs to be a holy reference for God. That's number one. That needs to be a respect for God's people. That's number two. And as I prepare to go to my seat, there's got to be a responsibility that we have toward God's word. A responsibility toward God's word. The word of God is truth. It's not a subjective truth. It's an eternal truth. And I'm tired of folk getting their truth outside of the Bible. I'm talking about folk that come to church, but you're reading your horoscope. Don't get quiet on me now. Telling people, you don't know me. I'm a Sagittarius. You better watch how you talk to me. I'm a Taurus the bull. No, you're a sinner. And the reason for your ugly ways and your nasty disposition is because you have no responsibility towards the word of God. Y'all talk back to me if you can. See, see, some folk, you are ugly acting old because you didn't have fun when you were young. The only old people that don't like young people are old people that didn't have fun when they was a young person. Am, am I doing all right this morning? Stop, stop criticizing that girl talking about look at that old little old fast gal. You used to be fast. Look, look, look at her with that little old short dress on. Your dress used to be short. Are y'all still praying with me? Don't hate because your dress no longer goes side to side but goes front to back. Church folk are so ugly and mean and nasty to people because they have no responsibility to the word of God. You sit down and act like this word ain't affecting you. But I've never heard a sermon that didn't hit me. It, it was either commending me for some good that I was trying to do or it was reprimanding me for some good that I was failing to do. But when I come to the house of God, I'm learning to humble myself because I'm in charge, but I ain't in control. God is in control. I say God is in control. And you know how you can tell a church that God is in control? They don't need a praise leader to get you all amped up. You don't need a preacher to tell you, let's put some hands together and praise the Lord. But you just start thinking about where God has brought you from. How many doors God has opened for you. How many ways God has made for you. 
And you don't need nobody to tell you to give God a hand of praise. Because when you think about the goodness of the Lord, of how he brought you not only from a mighty long way, but how he brought you all the way. I need somebody that can remember church the way church used to be. Some of you sisters, you got a weave and a wig right now. But you remember that hot comb they used to have in the kitchen. They put that hot comb on the stove. Your mama would tell you to hold that ear down. And you would hold your ear down. But you still had to go to school with burned up forehead and neck. Y'all ain't gonna help me in here. But then you had some school clothes. And then we had some play clothes. And then we had some church clothes. And when we put on our church clothes, we knew we were going to church. And we knew how to act in church. Mama didn't bring no pocketbook no coloring books and sippy cups to church now I ain't throwing shade at nobody so don't get quiet on me now but you got to understand they didn't bring baby dolls to church but grandmother would sit over here in the amen corner and we would be sitting over here in the choir area some of y'all remember how church used to be and she would look at us and all she had to do was look at us y'all ain't gonna help us in here and we knew how to act in church we knew how to act in the house of God and then if she did like this y'all knew what that meant she meant come meet me outside y'all ain't gonna help me because they didn't wait to chastise us but they chastised us right there at church am I talking to anybody in here and then they made us go back in church and sit down and act like we had some sense. Some of y'all remember how church used to be because they sure enough knew how to shout in church and how to praise God at the church. The Bible says let everything that hand breath praise ye the Lord and if the Lord has opened doors for you come on and help me show this young folk how to act in church if the Lord has made a way for you then you don't need nobody to tell you to give them God the glory. If the Lord has made a way for you, you don't need me to tell you to say amen. If the Lord has been your keeper, help me praise his name. If he's done anything for you, help me magnify his name. If he's been good to you, help me give him God the glory. No, you ain't got to do it if you don't want to. But some of us know down in your soul that if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, some of us can be real in here today because the Lord has been good to me. Why don't you grab somebody, shake somebody's hand, and tell them you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. I ain't playing no more. I ain't playing right now. You don't know like I know what the Lord. Grab somebody. Hit somebody. Tell them I'm glad to be in the service one more time. Is there anybody in here? I don't know about you, but I know he's all right. He brought me. He kept me. He saved me. Is there anybody in here that knows he's all right? Say yeah. Say yeah. Ain't it all right? This is how you act in church oh, we got too many folk that don't know how to act in church don't know what to do in church uh, but the psalmist said that I'll bless the Lord at all times and his praise will continually be in my mouth my soul 
shall make her boast in the Lord. And the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Is there anybody glad in the house today? We, we got to learn how to act in church. Church ain't a museum for you to just come look at stuff. But the song said, my worship is for real. That worship got to be a lifestyle. It's got to be in you. It, it can't just be on you. It's got to be in you. You say, well, pastor, what, what is appropriate church behavior? Well, I truly believe appropriate church behavior is when you realize who God is and how good God been to you, then you ought to show some signs. You ain't got to do it like sister over here do it, or sister back there do it, or sister over here do it, or brother over here do it, but you ought to do something to let the Lord know you're grateful, to let the Lord know you're thankful. Stop playing church. You ain't a child anymore. You're not one of these children back here behind me that, 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 that will go home and mock what they've seen in church. I laugh all the time. I remember some years ago. Uh, is she here? I ain't look, yeah, she back there. My niece, she was, she was, she was, they were talking about me preaching, how I preaching, and she was mocking me, talking about, <gasps> that's, that's, when, that's when she was a little younger. But, but that's what children do, but you ain't a child no more. We got to stop playing church and start having church and start being church. It's getting warm outside. I know a lot of these kids don't even play outside no more. But, but they'll be in the back room of the house. And you might peep around the door and you'll hear them play in church. Get in the mist. Because when we come to the Lord's house, this ain't the time to be playing. The song say, whatever you do for the master, let it be real. Let it be real. We all standing. We all standing. I'm, I'm finished. But appropriate church behavior. How, how to act. How to, how, to, how, to, how to behave in church. How to behave in in church? Stop, stop, stop worrying my phone. That's that's old. That's old time, man. We, you know, that that that's that old backwood stuff. That no, no. Cause you look back and you wonder how grandma and big mama and them were able to do some of the stuff they did. It's because they knew how to act in church. No jobs or a little piece of jobs for all your life. And you wonder, how did they feed everybody? You wonder, how did they keep the lights on? How did they pay for the car that they did have? Because they didn't play church. They had a reverence for God. They had a respect for God's people. And they had a responsibility to the word of God. To love thy neighbor as thyself. To have no other gods before thee.
they knew when they messed up they knew how to get in their prayer closets and begin to cry out to the Lord create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me O oh God they knew how to get in the face of the Lord and not worry about the hand of the Lord he just wanted to be seated at his feet. So today, there may be somebody here. But you have not been saved. You have a desire to be saved. You want to be saved. You want heaven to be your home. And you're saying, this, this is my time. This, I, now I know how to act. In church. Now I know what I'm supposed to be doing in the house of God. And I can only do it the way I'm supposed to do it if he is leading me and guiding me. So I want him to be number one. If that is you today, this is your opportunity to come. This is your chance to come and allow God to be first in your life. If you're desiring the salvation of the Lord, won't you come today? The altar is open now for salvation. Is there one today? Is there one today? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Seeing no movement there, we understand that, that those of you that you drop by every now and then, or you've been watching online and you decided to come by, and you've been searching, you've been looking for a church home, you've been looking for a place that you could call your spiritual headquarters where you can come and learn and grow with like-minded individuals who have a heart for God and a thirst for the things of God. And you truly feel in your spirit that Mount Zion is the place that God has directed you to. If that is you today, won't you come? You can come as a candidate for baptism. You may come by letter. You may come by your Christian experience. Or maybe you're affiliated with another church, but you're here now and you want to be covered by this church. You can come under our watch care ministry. If that is you today, won't you come? Won't you come? The altar is open to you. The altar is open to you. Maybe you're just standing in the need of prayer. Maybe you got some situations, some circumstances you're dealing with. Or maybe everything going good and you just want to thank him. Or maybe you need to stand in the gap for a friend, a family member, a neighbor, a co-worker, somebody you know, somebody you heard about. If that's you today, won't you come? The altar's open for prayer. The altar's open for prayer. Won't you come? Won't you come? Bring your cares, bring your concerns to the master. The altar's open for prayer. There's room. Come on closer. Come on closer. There's room. There's room. Bring it all to the Lord. Bring it all to the Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. There's room. He can't do it if you won't tell him about it. He wants you to talk to him. He wants you to trust him. He wants you to lean and depend on him. Won't you come? Won't you come? It's, it's prayer time. the Lord of praise put that thing in your spirit that you've been dealing with because God is in this holy temple there's room there's room Amen. Father God is in the name of Jesus 
God, we thank you for allowing us to come together, Father, to hear the word, Father, that's gone forth to let us know, God, that there's a way to act, God, and as long as we're giving you glory, God, you shall be pleased. Father, we thank you for making ways out of no ways, God. How, how you open doors, no man can shut, God. How, how you put the enemy at bay, God, and made him sit down when he was trying to stand up and stir up, God. You made a way out of no way. You fixed it even when we didn't know how it was going to be fixed. So we want to thank you. We want to thank you for the healing in our bodies. Uh, we want to thank you for the regulation of our mind. We want to thank you for the stillness of our spirit. We want to thank you for the awakening of the Holy Ghost, God, to lead God and direct us, God, through all trials and tribulations, God, that when we get to the end, Father, we'll be careful to give you all glory, honor, and praise. Father, we thank you for those that are uh, going through bereavement, God, how, God, you've stated their mind, God, how you're with them in the time of loneliness, God, when, when the phone calls and stop, God, you're still holding them close to you, God, and letting them know everything is going to be all right. It is well with you. We ask right now, God, that as we come together, Father, praying for one thing or another, God, you meet every need, God, according to your rich and glory, uh, according to your tender mercy, according to your way, God, that you've always made a way, according to the things that you've done before and how, God, you're about to do it again. Father, we can thank you. We can thank you knowing that with all confidence, though the enemy come in like a flood, your spirit raise up a standard against it and he won't be able to get through, God, but have to stand by and watch you be blessed in the congregation of our enemies, Father. Father, we glorify you. Father, we thank you for the youth that have gathered around this altar, God, that, that have been on youth day, God, that how you use them for the upbuilding of your kingdom. You said in your word, train a child in the way they should go, and when they old, they won't depart from it, God. We thank you that little Kelsey is saying we need a little more Jesus, and because we need a little more Jesus, Father, that you can open doors that no man can shut, God, and you can tell God to show you anointed on us, God, that in that day of breakthrough, God, we'll come through thanking you for everything you've done. Right now that you blessed our pastor, God. Everything he touched, God, let it be according to your will to be blessed even the more. Bless his family. Keep them, God. Heal, deliver, and set free. Now we, this congregation, God, ask for a blessing upon us, Father, that we follow him as he followed Christ. That we receive the word, God, but don't be selfish. Go out and share with brothers and sisters everywhere, making disciples of men. Father, we thank you for every opportunity. Father, we glorify, we honor you. That you meet every need that is being held, God. Uh, standing in proxy for someone else, God. Uh, the, whatever spoken or unspoken that we prayed in the atmosphere, God. That is in your control. And we know it as well because you said you perfect that which concerns us. Father, we have no other sense but to just thank you because we know it's already done. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you majesty. It's in the righteous and matchless name of Jesus Christ we pray. All in agreement, shout amen. Shout amen. Amen in the house. Amen. Though the flower fades and the grass withers, the word of our God shall stand forever. Amen. One, one quick announcement that I did forget, that I did forget, uh, tentatively, tentatively on April the 9th, I think that's right, I think that's a Tuesday, April the 9th, yeah, April the 9th, um, we will not have um, Bible study that night on April the 9th, we will have our first Transformation Tuesday of 2024 uh, we're going well we're going to do some things a little bit different we're going to come we're going to be here for about an hour um on that night but we're going to have um a joint baptism on that night on tuesday august the 9th august the 9th, april the 9th april the 9th tuesday april the 9th um with uh james hopewell will be here um pastor jackie sims is going to bring a short message for us on that night and we would, like I said, we were, I just got to finalize a couple of things, but that'll be on Tuesday, April the 9th. We will start at 7. We'll be done at 8. Amen. 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 We'll start at 7. We'll be done at 8 on Tuesday, April the 9th. Tuesday, April the 9th. Our first transformation Tuesday. We're going to have a few throughout the course of the year, um, but this will be our first one of the year, uh, Transformation Tuesday. Amen. 
because I believe people's lives need to continue to be transformed. Amen. So we thank God for you. We thank God for you. Amen. So we get ready to go. We get ready to go again. We want to say thank you to everyone. Thank you to everyone for coming and being a part of the worship experience. Thank you to all of you who log on and watch us online. We know you're there. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. We thank God for you. Um, who and just to, just to give you a quick rundown, we got some focal lines. Sister Claudia Wheeler Clark, God bless you. God bless you, Sister Sister Gloria Lindsay. Amen. God bless you. We got those that are watching us on other means as well. Um, I was trying to I wanted to just give out give some folks some shout outs real quick, but I was trying to find them. Uh, Sister Kimia Rhodes, Sister Shirley Henry, uh, Sister Gwen Jeta, Brother Kareem Bowers. Amen. God bless you all. God bless you all. There's some more. There's some more. There's some more. I can't, I can't find them all fast enough, but I want to let y'all know we see you, that we see you, and we thank God for you. Amen. What's that, Sister Sister Nina Bowers, Sister Melanie Harris, Sister Tara Miles, Sister Monique Jones, Sister Mel, uh, call that Melanie Harris, uh, and some others, Sister Jessica Lyles, and so on and so forth. God bless you all. God bless you all wherever you are. The rest of you who I don't see comments for or whatever, we know you're watching because I can see the numbers, so I know you're there. So God bless you. God bless you. We thank God for you. Amen. We all standing. We all standing. We all standing. Amen. Amen. We all standing. Again, to the um, anniversary committee and to those that have um, consented to help us um, um, with tickets, please. Um, after I greet everybody, please come meet us in the conference room in the back. Please come meet us in the conference room just for a few minutes. Won't take real long. Won't take real long. Again, thank you all very much. Let us look to the Lord. Gracious Father, we thank you now for what our eyes have seen and what our ears have heard. Now, Master, as always, as we prepare to leave from this place, but never from your presence. Keep us in your good graces and keep your arms wrapped around about us, God. Father, we give you glory, honor, and praise. It is in the blessed name of Jesus Christ we do pray. Now unto him who is able to present us faultless before the only wise God, be majesty, dominion, power, and glory, both now and forever. And let all of God's people say amen. Amen, amen again. Amen. amen once more. Please hold your places till the ushers come to dismiss you.